Okay. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patricia Kieran. I'm from Chemical Engineering in UCD. And on behalf of our work package leaders here, here this morning and the remainder of our team and institutions around the country, I'm delighted to welcome you to update you on our progress towards supporting Irish, supporting and preparing Irish engineering graduates for advancing global manufacturing competitiveness, specifically in this case with regard to design simulation for the process, and I mean pharma and biopharma applica applications. Just to remind you, our objective at the start of this project was to develop a strategy and the resources required to support this strategy to allow us to embed simulation tools, discipline-specific simulation um, tools, into chemical engineering and related curricula for the achievement of professionally relevant skills in our, graduate, in our graduates, digital literacy uh, related skills, underpinning very specific chemical engineering principles and in the context of biopharma and pharma applications, which are central to the, bio, the pharma and biopharma industry, which is a very robust and growing industry um, in Ireland and globally. Because these are digitally based simulation tools, they're key to enhancing digital literacy in our graduates. As befits uh, a project which is focusing on the chemical engineering discipline, all of the chemical engineering program, the higher education institutions offering chemical engineering programs in the country are involved, UCD, CIT, UCC and the University of, L of Limerick. We're also joined by partner institutions offering cognate disciplines specifically related to the biopharma, the biopharma industry and biosciences. Because we're focusing on developing multimedia rich, rich resources, we're relying on and we're delighted to be joined by Cork Institute of Technology, leading the, multi, the, the technology enhanced learning elements of it. And we have teaching and learning support specifically from UCD and from DCU. A very important, oh, in this team, we've had new members who have joined us since I last met with you in November, chemical engineering academics in UCD and in CIT, and also a new staff member from DIT, Dr. Dave Doran, who is now leading the work package on process, on process control. Because this, work, this project is very much focused towards graduates moving from higher education institutions into the workplace, place, it's again appropriate that we would have a very diverse range of external partners and we are relying very heavily on these non-funded external partners. The National Institute for Bioprocessing Research and Training, Scale-Up Systems, an Irish-owned and Irish-based company who, are, who produce Dynachem, which is an industry standard uh, simulation tool for the farm pharma and biopharma industry, APC, which is a process development, optimization and, and scale-up company for the global ph biopharma sector, but pharma and biopharma sector, but based here in Dublin, Jacobs, which is an international consultant, consultancy firm, but their Dublin office, who is our main partner, has specific expertise in pharma and biopharma projects, and the ICME, which is the international accreditation body for the chemical engineering uh, for the chemical engineering profession uh, to which all of our chemical engineering programs uh, sub subscribe. Here we've had one new member, Dr. Melissa Hoare, who is the training manager with, uh, with, with NIBERT based here in Dublin. Three, uh, six months ago, what did we say we were going to do? We said we were going to develop a series of learning suites focusing on very specific areas, fermentation, chromatography, distillation and process modelling control. All very broad topics, but we're looking specifically at pharma and biopharma applications. We're again developing these resources to support a theory, experiment, experimentation, simulation um, scaffold or around, around that scaffold. These reusable resources will ultimately be available to students in all relevant disciplines through an open online, online platform. And we are focusing on a carefully selected, limited um, set of industry relevant and very widely used, commercially available um, simulation and model modeling tools listed, listed here. What have we done? 
Our project started on March 1st rather than on, on, on January 1st because the timing of the pro project was designed to ensure that students could be involved in resource development and in resor resource evaluation and also to allow us to meet the not insignificant recruitment challenges asso associated with finding appropriate candidates for, for the positions. We had our inception workshop in Nybert, generously hosted by, by Nybert, one of, our, one of our partners, in March of 2000, uh, March of, of, of this year. There we had working package, work uh, package overviews, clarification of our, lear of our learning outcomes, and a preliminary identification of our learning resources. And because this is really done at the interface of the chemical engineering, the subject experts, and the learning tech, the, the educational technology experts, this was a really important outcome from that, from that, from that workshop. Our work is subdivided into work packages. Work package two deals specifically with multimedia resource development. And I'm delighted to ask Dara Coakley from CIT, who co-leads this, co this package with Dr. Garuda Sulawine, to summarize their activity in this area to date. Dara, thank you. Thank you. Um, so a number of questions arose with regard to multimedia development at the proposal stage and in the initial meeting. And this, these questions primarily related to the need to develop a number of different multimedia resources across a number of different work packages dealing in quite specific kind of content areas. So questions included how many resources to be developed, the level of media richness that could be achieved against time and budget, interactivity, pedagogical effective, effectiveness, so is this piece of content, content best served by a screencast, by an interactive simulation, by a number of uh, pages of text-based content, and also issues related to granularity and consistency. And those last two elements, I think, kind of really represented a fear that done incorrectly, uh, the development of resources, would, multimedia resources, would become several small sub-projects across the different work packages, as opposed to a more unified whole, and that when it came to put these together, that resources from one work package would not communicate very well with resources from another. So the solution which we um, came up, which we've decided upon as a way of addressing all these concerns is based on the development of small self-contained and granular learning objects um, with multimedia resources at the heart of these and based around the um, spiral learning approach of theory, exp experimentation and simulation which was mentioned by Patricia earlier. So the intention is that in this way, um, small learning objects would be able to put together to form larger courses, would be easily distributed to additional OERs, and also could be downloaded and used individually by, um, by individual lecturers to support their own teaching practice. So um, multimedia development is ongoing at the moment. Um, we've uh, adopted an approach based on the successive approximation model. Um, so this process involves an initial stage of visualization, data gathering, and collaboration. Um, a representation is given here of um, a visualization of the curriculum for work package six, distillation, broken down into different subject areas, learning outcomes, and then desired multimedia resources based on these. Content is then uh, added by subject matter experts into appropriate templates in order to best structure it from an instructional design point of view for the appropriate resource, be it a simulation, a video demonstration, a screencast and so forth. Um, for each of these resources, a number of pre-production um, media uh, screens are developed. An example is given here of storyboards for a screencast for distillation. And all of this is decided upon and signed off by all the relevant stakeholders before production begins. And the intention here really is to just maximize efficiency, to minimize um, any potential issue, issues which could hold up time and um, use of resources. Um, so as I mentioned, this process is ongoing at the moment. It's ongoing specifically with work package six, distillation. And the intention with, tri with essentially focusing on one work package before moving on to additional work packages is the intention that um, by going through the process once, appropriate tweaks, if necessary, can be made to processes, to templates, so on and so forth, and that this then can be easily rolled out with the other work packages in order to, again, just maximize efficiency and to reduce any unnecessary waste of time and resources. Thank you very much. 
So, moving on to give what will, to the frustration of the work package leaders here, be just a whirlwind summary of what they have done or what we have done um, in each of the remaining four subject area work packages. Chromatography, a very important, extremely expensive downstream processing and purification opera operation in the biopharmaceutical industry is led by Dr. Carmel Hensi from UCD. The experimental systems are provided, experimental pilot scale systems are provided by, by Nybert. Working together with Nybert and the chemical engineers, Carmel and Carmel her, and her team have defined the chrom chromatographic process. They have broken it down into a series of discrete steps, which will each be tackled individually in terms of, in terms of learning resources. They've recruited an, MN, an MSc project student who started work at the beginning of the month, and that we've been given six weeks in Nybert of access to their pilot, pilot scale facility facilities, which is going to start on June the, on June the 20th. In terms of fermentation, which is really, I suppose, the heart of most bi of bioprocesses, this work package is led by Dublin City University, the School of uh, the School of Biotechnology. Specifically, it's led by by Dr. Brian Freeland. The specifications are complete. The experimental the experimental um, design has been has been defined has been defined. Personnel has have been recruited to the project, included an additional unanticipated um, um, master's project student from 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 Freiburg, and the students have been trained in the operation of the pilot scale fermentation system. This is a very experimentally heavy element of the work package, basically the accumulation of experimental fermentation data, which will then go on to seed the modeling and, and, and simulations. There's an off-gas analyzer, which is a luxury not usually available to undergraduate students on fermentation systems. It's funded by the project, and it's going to yield a richer, more Modeling, amenab modeling and simulation amenable data set, and that's already been ordered, but not yet, but not yet invoiced. Um, one an additional unanticipated part of this project was we'd originally thought that most of the simulation would be done in a, in a lab view environment. However, as a result of interaction with scale-up systems who produce Dynachem, we now anticipate a much larger role for Dynachem mod modeling exercises associated with this firm fermentation element of the project and I think that's going to be that's going to be uh, particularly useful this slide just illustrates schematically how all of these elements to, will come together, showing in the centre the use of the Nybert um, industry standard pilot scale fer fermentation systems to which our students in any of the institutions would not normally have access and which will be specifically employed in the tutorial videos. Process control is another interdisciplinary act, uh, um, area. It's grounded in electrical engineering, but all of the applications are discipline-specific or sector-specific. sector, sector specific. It's led by, D, by DIT, by Dr. Dave Doran. They have identified target processes here, which will be the focus of this work package, and are, which are of broad applicability to, the far, to pharma and biopharma applications. You'll see distillation, for example, in there, which is going to come in in the next, in the next work package. They've recruited the postgraduate researcher who's funded by this, by this program. He'll start work on the, on the 20th of this month. And there are three summer interns have already started work here. What we're not trying to do with this is to reinvent the wheel. So quite a lot of this work package's effort to date has gone on finding out exactly what good resources are out there already, what formats are uh, find mo uh, echo well or resonate well with students. And this is the example of the type of graphical user interface which is anticipated for this, pro for this work package. Distillation is led at UCD by my, co by my colleague, uh, Dr. Damien Mooney. And distillation, while it's of use by chemical engineers in almost all sector, within the pharma and biopharma industry applications are mainly confined to solvent recovery and solvent, solvent swap. We've recruited the personnel. Three final year project students have been working on this during the, pa during the past semester. Four summer interns have started, well, three have already started, one is starting this week, and we've just recruited the MNJC student who will start on the 1st of July. We have laboratory to pilot scale, 
simple batch to batch with reflux systems at various stages of development, redevelopment and validation, including a system which has been donated by APC and for which technical support has been provided by APC. The simulation element of this work package is particularly rich because it's going to include, um, it will span simple systems, simple batch distillation systems to complex multi-component, multi-column systems. It's going to allow the students to develop a, a variety of skills in the use of uh, graphically, based, graphically based systems, flow sheeting systems and coding systems. And here again, unanticipated additional input from our industrial partners. For the national impact, I think the potential for national impact is immediately obvious here in the direct involvement of every chemical engineering programme in the country. Students from selected institutions are already involved in the development of the, of the resources. Students from all institutions will be involved in the, tre the testing and the re-evaluation and ultimately in the use of, the, of these resources. We've been drawing a, a higher than anticipated profile through our external uh, Ex external partners and in July every chemical engineering intern from each of the institutions and their employers will all be asked to participate in a survey on the use of the simulation tools. Evaluation and sustainability have been built into the project from the very beginning. We're really too early into the project to be deeply ingrained, in, 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 enmeshed in the evaluation. But I think the key element of this is this is really important, the chemical engin engineering profession. It's important to chemical engineering educators around the country. We're committed to embedding these resources and the learning outcomes in the accreditation, in, the, in our accreditation, professionally accredited curriculum which are absolutely central to the recognition of our graduates as they emerge from our programmes. Thank you very much.